Which word of the day? Today's word is totem, noun. A totem is a spirit being or symbol of a tribe, clan, family, or individual. Different animal guides, also called spirit guides and or power animals, come in and out of our lives depending on the direction that we are headed and the tasks that need to be completed along the journey. Some indigenous tribes' beliefs further explain that a totem animal is one that is with you for life, both in the physical and spiritual world. Though people may identify with different animal guides throughout their lifetimes, it is this one totem animal that acts as the main guardian spirit. With this one animal, a connection is shared. Also, go watch Brother Bear, the Disney movie, about totems and wonderful things. You haven't even read that? Wait, what are you doing with the book? So he has the confidence to finish the story. Hear now the words of the witches. This is Kevin, and welcome to Words of the Witches, the Charmed podcast that will guide you through the lesser-known published material in the Charmed universe and decide how it fits into the grand narrative of the TV series. Come one, come all, welcome. This is episode 12 of the podcast, Words of the Witches. Yes, awesome, cool, cool. I have a lot of announcements to make today. Uh, before we start, so let's get right into it. Uh, first thing is uh, I have come up with a name for the listeners on my own, all by myself. I did request some suggestions, and I did get a few, but um, I was having just a hard time finding the one that seemed to fit, the one that seemed to feel right. So I came up with one. Are you ready for it? That's my drum roll, but I can't really drum roll. I decided to call the listeners Spell Worders. <laughs> spell worders. I said it again. That might sound a little odd. It's not the best, I know, but I think it works because this show is called Words of the Witches. Witches cast spells, and spells have words. So it comes full circle. And you know what else you can do with words? Spell them. W O R G S. <laughs> I'm so stupid. <laughs> the next thing, something pretty interesting, is that, uh, Gil, a listener of the podcast, contacted me and was surprised to hear that Beware What You Wish was the last Prue book because he apparently had a lot more Prue books that were released. We started talking and figuring out what the uh, discrepancy was because I know we only had 10 released, but um, he sent me pictures. And apparently in Germany, they released uh, a lot of novelizations of episodes that were released into books. So they had like Prue's Legacy of All Hell Breaks Loose and um, I think Death Takes a Hallowell and they had all these other, they had Wedding from Hell and they had all these other episodes that were released into novel form in Germany. And so they got a lot more books there. Pretty fascinating to learn. So if you're in Germany, you're going to see a lot more Prue books and some uh, extra page books as well. Another thing I wanted to address uh, was I re recently posted on the Instagram about... Um, you know, Graham's making excuses about why they can't see Prue. You know, it would, you know, it would keep them from their, from their destiny is what they said. You know, she said that they're helping her through this and that, you know, seeing Prue would keep her alive for them and all that stuff like that. So, um, but I always felt like we never got closure. We never got the proper goodbye. And, you know, that didn't, never made sense why they couldn't summon Prue. But a friend of mine, Ashley, has like this superhuman power <laughs> to analyze narratives in a very profound way, a very deep dive of thematic elements and emotional elements. And um, she gave me a whole reasoning of how she felt like she got good closure in the show, a good reason why she can't come. Uh, so let's take a look at what she says. She says, in that very episode, Charmed Again, Penny told Piper that she and Patty were on the other side helping Prue to adjust to being dead. Okay, valid. Uh, she even says she can't go into details as to how Prue is handling her death because doing so keeps her alive for Piper and would stop them from grieving how they should. The dead need to be dead. It's the natural order, and we don't know how long it would take for her to, her to adjust. Um, and she brings up a good point that it was 21 years before Prue saw the spirit of her mother again. Um, and then 22 years for Piper and Phoebe. So, you know, because Prue saw her in from Fear to Eternity, in the water. That was the first time Prue saw her again, and even then she was in darkness. And then they weren't even allowed to see her when um, Sam was around. In P3H2O, when, they saw, when Sam died, they had to have Sam say goodbye to her or say hello to her because they weren't allowed to interact. So very profound connections here. And she says one of the reasons they could see Grams within two years of her passing would speak to the fact that Grams has always made light of her death and the fact that she was a high priestess status uh, giving her more leeway into the spiritual guide. 
Okay, their mother is a sensitive issue, and seeing their mother is always harder on them than seeing Grams. With Prue dead, seeing Prue would be harder on them even more. Uh, and she goes on to talk about pre-witched when they summon Ariel, the ghost of a witch who Shadow, her familiar, betrayed and killed. So they talk to her, they summon her, and she tells them that she was still trying to figure out how to come to terms with being dead. It was hard for her. We, we have seen throughout the show that spirits who are unable to accept the, their deaths end up unable to move on and haunt the living. So she's saying that if they summon Prue, that would even keep her from fully moving on and give Prue a link to want to stay connected to the living world. Very fascinating stuff. Okay, they call on Grams or she visits for very specific magical needs. Prue showing up would only be for their own selfish needs and not wanting to let her go and not wanting her to move on. Doing that to a spirit would be cruel. And that's something I never thought about. I, I too was kind of wanting to summon Prue for selfish reasons, to see her, to help me find a closure. But really, you have to think about the people who have died too and how that would affect them. And Ashley does a good job of really bringing some things to, to the light. Um, when it comes to magical knowledge, she'd be of no value. Same reason they didn't summon Patty all the time. There was no reason for her to spirit to even be summoned. Sounds nice, but doing so would be only for personal gain and would not have been fair to Prue. And as for those things, she can make, just make some wind. Every spirit needs a different time to learn how to do these things, if they can at all, assuming they would even want to. So I thought those were very beautiful points, very poignant points. Um, and it did. It did give me a, a greater sense of comfort as to why Prue didn't come back in the series. And although we would have loved it, I would have loved it, and and I think it would have been amazing. Um, these points that Ashley gave have given me some something to think about and something to appreciate. Kudos to Ashley. She's one of the biggest Charmed fans I know as well. She's a huge Charmed fan. Hopefully she can come on the podcast at some point. But in the meantime, you can go check out her YouTube channel, The Movie Oracle, where she's always reviewing lots of crazy movies and horror movies and um, talking about Charmed. And uh, she's great. So everybody follow her. She's amazing. Okay, so today's book is Spirit of the Wolf. And... Um, when thinking about wolf appearances in this series, there's three that automatically come to mind. The first one was um, 302 Magic Hour, when Brooke turned into the wolf and her boyfriend Christopher turned into the owl. Um, so that was a really nice wolf. And then we had Season 5, Episode 3, Happily Ever, Ever After, where we had the big bad wolf. Um, and then there is Season 6, Episode 14, The Legend of Sleepy Hollowell, when the wolf guided Phoebe on her vision quest. So, yeah, I that, it's really interesting to note those because there's a wolf in this book that appears a lot. So, connections. This book is also the first time, besides Charmed Again talking about All Hell Breaks Loose, but this is the first time we see Piper use her molecular combustion power. So, something cool to note. Anyway, uh, well, let's, let's get on with it, shall we? Episode 12, and I have Mr. Robear here. Hi. <laughs> Hello, sir. How are you? Good. Last time we got to really talk was on Hanging with the Hallowells. You were a guest on Yeah. There. Last time on Rob's Life. Yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, tell us about your relationship with Charmed and your discovery of the show. Oh, goodness. Uh, well, I was just a wee youngin. Uh, probably like sophomore, junior year, maybe, I think in high school. And... It happened to, I think I caught a commercial or I just caught it on TV. I think I remember being super excited about it, you know, and then when it came on, because it was like in the evening. So I had to wait for all my stupid siblings to go to bed so that I could watch it in peace. It just got me from the first episode. I was always into that kind of stuff, you know, the the Wicca and witches and supernatural <laughs> things and magic. I was already into Buffy, so that fit right into it. Yeah. Do Do you have a favorite sister or episode or anything like that? What's What's that? My favorite uh, sister is Piper. I love Piper. Um, I do love Prue a lot too, but she let me down by dying. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> um, I did have a big crush on Phoebe when she was on Who's the Boss, though. Samantha. Right, that was her name. I thought I was straight. <laughs> <laughs> well, surprises happen every day, right? <laughs> surprise, surprise. Oh, uh, yeah. So, um, 
the 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 episode that still gives me chills is the day Prue died. I mean, it's classic. It's 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 that good. I remember watching that episode, you know, and the whole thing went, and then they rewound time, and then it went all over again, and then oh my god, when the door closed and the glass broke, I was shook. Oh, I remember that day too. I'm just like, oh my god. Oh my God. <laughs> like now what? And I remember I recorded that episode on my VHS tape. And whenever I was like mad at something happening in the house, I would put it on and just cry. I'm like, cry makes me feel better. <laughs> <laughs> That's my favorite episode just because it, it it's so emotional and it, you know, just strikes chord. But I do love the show so much. So this book is called Spirit of the Wolf. Tell the children what you admitted to me. <laughs> <sighs> what I admitted was that um, I have a problem and can't read, uh, <laughs> apparently. So I didn't get to finish uh, reading the book. I think I got a chapter, no, three chapters in, and I just I couldn't pick it back up. I have mental illness, I think. Well, it's good. It's it's going to bring a different dynamic to this episode, so I'm not too mad at you. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I get the gist of it. I could probably predict what's going to happen. Well, the thing just about- because I know how these things work. <laughs> <laughs> Something about this book, I was going to mention this later, but I thought I knew how this was going to go all kinds of times, and it never went how I expected. I'm like, it just, it, it took me off guard a lot. So maybe, maybe you'll be surprised. Are you yeah. ever going to do the, the comics? Are you going to go into the comics when you're done with the book? Yeah, that's the plan. Um, cool. The plan I mentioned, I don't know what you all heard, but we're going to go all do all the books. Then we're doing all the comic books. Then uh, after the season nine comic books, we're going to do the two ebooks because that takes place after season nine. Then we'll do the season 10 comics. Then we're going to do the Dynamite comic, A Thousand Deaths and Magic School. And then after that, we're going to go into the official magazines and do all those issues of the magazines. And then after that, I'll probably go into the actresses books and I'll be doing like uh, articles that were in other magazines and the TV guides. So I've got a lot planned. <laughs> so I'm glad because again, I can't seem to read those either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, once the books are done, we'll do the comic books and we'll just keep carrying on and carrying on. So that's great. So I'm looking forward to this roller coaster I'm about to go on because yeah, I only know the beginning of the book. Well, and things will be unraveled as we go. You'll be. You can you can tell your real time reactions to these revelations. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so maybe this is like a, a, a breakthrough episode. Yeah, maybe. This is called Spirit of the Wolf, and it is written by Diana G. Gallagher, who wrote "Beware What You Wish" previously. This is her mm-hmm. second book. It was published October second, two thousand one, with a reprint on August fifth, two thousand two, and. Tagline on a sacred land, unholy beings rise, ellipses. And it has a nice season four promo picture uh, of them in their like pretty colorful, like halter toppy things. They got Paige in her blue, Piper in her glittery pink thing, and Phoebe in her. I did not enjoy this season's fashion. <laughs> Phoebe H. It's like they were all being dressed by Phoebe's. Uh, <laughs> Pretty much. And they all got their shiny lip gloss on and they all have their hair straightened. Well, Phoebe has her like Lady in the Tramp like, style I haircut. I expect this from Phoebe, but well, maybe a little bit from Paige too. Yeah, Paige's looks okay, but Piper's looks a little too glamazon to be, you know, her makeup yeah. is all. So, but that was one of those. They did a lot of different season four pictures and that was one of them that they. I the mean, I, pre- I appreciate their beauty, but you know. <laughs> being gay i was just like oh those outfits <laughs> <laughs> um in the background we have uh, the shadow of a wolf howling and it's like this oh, oh yeah and it's kind of like uh going on dusk like t- going on sunset and there's shadows of pine trees and a forest very beautiful cover actually uh and then the back of the book says in the untouched forest a magic beast appears a savior of the land or symbol of deepest fears. At a remote resort in the Sierra Nevada mountains, a tree bursts into flames. An animal skull oozes blood and a wolf threatens to attack, then vanishes like a ghost. The police suspect a nearly extinct Native American group that was forced off of the resort's land long ago. Others blame the owners of the resort for defiling sacred tribal lands. Uh, Phoebe and Paige arrive for a free opening weekend and some sisterly bonding but are soon drawn into danger by incidents both natural and unnatural. A powerful shaman holds the key to the mystery with his secret knowledge. 
knowledge that is shared by the wolf haunting the land. The sisters call upon Piper, Leo, and Cole for guidance and summon all their powers to confront a demon as cunning as they have ever encountered. Yes. This novel is supposed to take place between season four, episode six, A Night to Remember, because uh, Paige moves in at that time, so she is living in the manor. Mm -hmm. Um, And then, but it is before episode eight, Black is Cole, because that's when Cole loses his powers, you know? (laughs) Yes, I did. I did get that far in the book, although it was all of the details that I already knew that slowed me down in the beginning. Yeah. Chapter one, it is morning. Phoebe is job hunting, so she is just really desperate for a job. Uh, Paige, yes. having recently moved in, fights Phoebe for a cinnamon roll. I know, like, <laughs> Pepper made some cinnamon rolls. Phoebe has, like, the last one. She's going to take a bite, and then Paige, like, orbs it out. And she's like, no, it's my, <laughs> cinnamon, my cinnamon roll now. Um, but then they agree to split it. She's nice. and It's not personal gain. You know, they mention how P3 is about to get a new security system that instantly alerts the police upon breaking. I feel like that might be a little dangerous, seeing as how sometimes they're there. Or like Orban, or, you know, yeah. fight a demon there. <laughs> Any, anything, anything could set it off, and it's like, uh, you really want this going off all the, the time? The cops, the cops show up while you're trying to vanquish. Yeah, that's they, something that wouldn't have worked well if, if that was canon <laughs> so Paige goes to work she's late so she's like, i'm gonna go to work and as she goes to work phoebe gets a phone call we don't know what it is who it is though um and then we cut to piper and leo they're trying to sleep in in the attic because they were interrupted by Paige in their bedroom mm-hmm. earlier mm-hmm. it's like you know we're just gonna sleep in up here so we're not interrupted because who mm-hmm. knows what's down in our bedroom is uh piper freezing leo again and i remember that i mean I, i'm fairly <laughs> confident that's what's happening especially um, what happens at the end of the book is it's very confident that's what she's doing. She's like, no interruptions. Phoebe rushes into the attic looking for Prue's camera bag. Apparently, Phoebe just accepted a job for 415 that Prue was scheduled for. And she decided that she's going to take on the job instead because she's really desperate for a job. And she's planning. Oh, Prue was planning on using Phoebe as an assistant for the job anyway. So she's like, why don't I yes. just do it? Uh, yeah, because Pepper... it's so easy. Yeah. Pepper's like, you don't even know how to use a camera. <laughs> and she's yeah. like, Whatever, I'll I'll figure it out. There's a manual. <laughs> oh my god! And this was in the days of not digital cameras, so it was a film camera, and that's even harder. Yeah, because I mean, you have to hope that you took the right picture. <laughs> I mean, I can't imagine that Phoebe took anything that was worthwhile, and like I don't know. Do you like? How do you feel? Do you think that's something that Phoebe would do? Is take a job that was scheduled for Prue like that, like, especially if you didn't know. Anything? Um, I'd say yeah, because didn't didn't she actually do something like that on the show, or mention it, or photo job like similar to that? I feel like that happened. She never, no, she I never could took be wrong. Fo- yeah, she never took a photo job. She did come to Bucklands once, or did maybe she Buckland's. mentioned, like mentioned one time how she did that for Prue once, or <laughs> or I might have read it. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, if you're going from the canon of these books, she has been working with Prue quite a while but it was more like a ruse they just tell people you're my assistant so you can get into things so she wasn't really actually working she was just kind of telling people I, I remember that happening on the show a couple times I think you'd I be the one to tell me yeah I, maybe not. I, I can't I can't recall anything like that I know she had lots of photo shoots that she was um taking pictures of, you know she's being shot but I don't know if she's ever like helped out on an actual shoot but yeah she takes the job as you know, she's gonna be a photographer for this like mm-hmm. summer retreat uh, not summer but like this campground retreat um mm-hmm. as she's looking for the camera cole shimmers in and phoebe tells him that she's taking the job in the woods and at first he's like oh no that's not a good idea i don't think so but then uh they talk about it and cole tells phoebe that there's a demon named q hall that uh has sworn to hunt him down he's like on the run from him and he, and uh He's like, oh, maybe going out in the woods and being away from me would be good for you. <laughs> uh, if he so they, doesn't happen to show up. Right. So they agree that the weekend will be a good time away and take Paige with you. So she wants she plans to take Paige with her and they're going to have a weekend in the woods. I read that chapter. It was like a, a retreat for adults, though, wasn't it? Right. Yes, for adults. I'd do that. <laughs> right. Hopefully without uh, any supernatural consequences. Right, because you, you are a big, like, Naked hiker, you're probably naked like me all the time. So, <laughs> yes, I do. I, I hike naked all the time. Actually, last week we went to. Are you familiar with Deep Creek? No. It's a, a hot springs. It's over in uh, Apple Valley in California. And we 
hiked in there totally nude the whole way and then we stayed naked all day and then we hiked back naked see and it was amazing i don't have i don't have stuff like that but you know i'm all about it maybe one of these days you need to do it or (laughs) visit california because that happens here all the time it's actually i don't know what day this is gonna air but today is international nude day which is fitting because i just did some naked life modeling earlier today um good and uh, I t- we talked about it earlier, but uh, yeah. yeah, so I was perfect. I was naked for a long time, getting drawn by all kinds of strangers and posing and feeling really kind of cool and awesome and brought some props in with, of superheroes. And <laughs> Do you so, ever get a like aroused? Sure. I mean, that's just part of the process. So do they draw that too? Yeah. Oh, huh. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this blows my mind. You're. <laughs> Naked hiking blows your mind. What you do blows my mind. You know, <laughs> T- maybe TMI for a charmed podcast, but there you go. This is me. This is who I am. Embrace it. And right? this is not TMI. There, <laughs> dude. The listeners are like, ooh, ooh, where can I do that? Tell me more. Mm, yeah, I bet you. I, if there's anybody going to leave a comment, mention how you want to know how to draw people naked on the internet. I bet you they'll do it. Uh, yeah. I, it's, it's a big thing. It's a really big thing. So Paige, reticent about interrupting again, comes to Phoebe's room. Phoebe tells Paige that the cabins don't have electricity, but the main compound on the reserve does. Uh, Vista Recreation is the company trying to make the Sierra Sojourn a themed resort. And Phoebe thinks that they may be screwing people over in the name of expanding. Uh, Maud, the cook at Sierra Sojourn in the kitchen, greeted by Sonia, the dining room survive, uh, supervisor. Uh, Sonia tells Maud that her husband Kyle rented movies for them to watch tonight. Oh my! <laughs> I know it wasn't not that kind of movie, but <laughs> uh, they're on a retreat by themselves. I think that's open to interpretation. <laughs> but they but they invite Maud. <laughs> to come with her so some people are into that <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness uh mod passes on the invite and closes up uh she is on on edge as she heads to her cabin she's probably afraid they're gonna show up at her door <laughs> uh as she nears her cabin a tree bursts into flames and was sucking in the air around her oh I thought that was going somewhere else. <laughs> I, uh, I knew you were. <laughs> Maud rushes into the cabin to grab some possessions. And then a snarling wolf stands in the doorway. Carlos, the night guard of the wilderness, took in his surroundings. And then Maud, worn and scratch, tells Carlos that uh, about what happened. And he is concerned that the wolf is dangerous. I mean, it is a wolf, so... <laughs> That's a, a good uh, desertion, I would say. Carlos goes in to investigate the tree and cabin, and there seems to be nothing out of the ordinary. Carlos thinks the Sinoyat. Sinoyat? Sinoyat. Yeah, that's the, that's the Sinoyat uh, people. Native American tribe. But I looked it up, and it's not a real tribe. <gasps> so they made it up for this book. <laughs> oh, well, I guess that's better than like appropriating their culture for the book or whatever right uh the sinoyad people now i guess i don't have to respect how to say it right <laughs> uh carlos thinks that sinoyad the, the sinoyad have the give, given mod hallucinations right that's where we're at. right yeah and is convinced he has to kill this rabid wolf carlos gets to his cabin and on his bed was the skull of a wolf with blood pouring out of the eye sockets. Yeah. That's kind of ominous, though. I'd be scared about that. For real. I'm like, okay, this is... All these little pieces are like... I, I'm like, I'm not messing with this. This is probably some kind of crazy, like, curse on me. <laughs> like, I'd probably be more prepared to deal with a horse head. At least, you know, you can <laughs> dodge a bullet, but this is something else. <laughs> right. And this some Blair Witch crap. <laughs> it really is. Yeah. Uh, and this chapter was when it started to introduce a ton of characters. This book is yeah. uh, it's overrun with characters. And I do appreciate that they are given weight, but mm-hmm. um, 
as this book goes on, it gets very overwhelming to keep track of all these characters, especially some of them are just so minor that they don't matter. You could have just generalized them, but you know, she's a writer that wants to give every character their fair due. So <laughs> they would have been dropped in casting. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, so chapter three, Phoebe and Paige arrive at a mountain cafe where they park. So what's happening is they stop at this uh, little parking area and then they're going to be going on to like a bus shuttle to the actual reserve. Uh, that's about three hours away after that. <laughs> yeah. So and then they it sounds uh, like the, the trip to St. Olaf. Oh, OK. <laughs> <laughs> Do you watch Golden Girl? I've seen it i'm not a, i don't know i i i'm not a crazy fan like i know it but sometimes i forget who's who in the series i, I wish you would have told me that before we started uh can we just yeah done? Okay. oh no, i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> i'm like uh <laughs> you know no, I'm, like, I'm just kidding <laughs> i just figure that everybody has you know i i mean it's funny when i watch it i'm just not a crazy fan like most people oh. are uh well you should watch it enough to be a crazy fan because then you'd understand <laughs> uh they moving right along yes phoebe and page they go out on the lookout for angie swanson which is the 415 freelance partner that phoebe's supposed to like she's the journalist that phoebe's supposed to be the photographer for and they're supposed to um, work together on this project and they see Mitch Rawlings, which is like this top-notch investigative reporter, and he bumps into Angie, like, oh, so there's a girl we have to meet, but she's there's this other Mitch guy that's really like, you know, notorious for being really famous and popular and and talented. Uh, and uh, Phoebe's like, oh, you know, what? I'm gonna go say hi. She, she gives Paige money. She gives her a roll of uh, film. She's like, get more of this film. Give me some disposable cameras, and uh, you know, we'll meet back later. I need to get, get make sure I get a good picture to impress him. <laughs> That sounds like Phoebe. <laughs> yes. So Paige goes to the general store there to buy more film for Phoebe. Um, and then Phoebe goes up to Mitch and Angie and she introduces herself. Angie is really dismissive of her and she gets really pissed when Mitch asks Phoebe to join them both for lunch because Angie is all like trying to get in Mitch's pants. She's trying to like get a date here. And she's like, I don't need this attractive other lady coming in to try to steal my man that I'm trying to get. <laughs> But, you know, Phoebe is not interested because she is cool. So, yeah, I mean, she doesn't look like she's not interested. I know she's really not. She's really like <laughs> leading them on. You know how like, Phoebe do. Remember <laughs> Phoebe doing? This is how Phoebe do. <laughs> That's how Phoebe do. <laughs> <laughs> and then it comes to Piper. She's happily rested now that she had a wonderful evening and morning with Leo. <laughs> mm-hmm. she's all alone she has the manor to herself with leo sisters are gone she's having a good old time uh then daryl calls and leo answers the phone daryl or buzzkill or cock block <laughs> yeah because just saying I, it's it's valid because piper plans to spend the whole day with leo and they also rented some movies because they're gonna watch some movies tonight she's like i got a whole day planned i'm gonna make a nice dinner it's gonna be wonderful uh um, wait where Where's the timeline? Is is uh, this the night they conceive Wyatt? <laughs> oh, hmm. uh, <laughs> this would be in the beginning of season four. She didn't she didn't know she was pregnant until the end of season four. So there's still that checks out. Well, no, <laughs> one season. Yeah, she but found she, out she was pregnant. But how long do you have take to take to find out you're pregnant? Like three months. The season's longer than three months because you know she later on in the season. She finds out that her doctor that she can't get pregnant, which which makes no sense at all because then she gets <laughs> pregnant. <laughs> I know that's that's a miracle. She didn't say she can't get pregnant, but she said it's close to impossible. It's in Room Raider. It's in the end of season. It's near the end of season four, but she finds out she is going to have trouble getting pregnant. So then, probably a few weeks later is when she actually finds out. Mm. So so maybe not. I guess. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. She's trying to crack the code. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, she's too too early still. I mean, we know when Chris was conceived, so... Yes, we do know that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Brown chicken, brown cow on the ghost plane. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, Daryl's on the phone, and he tells them that and uh, the alarm went off at P3, and Piper and Lee have to go meet him at the club. Like, okay. <laughs> See, this is why you don't put an alarm at the club. Yeah, it's going to ruin your life. <laughs> In the general store, Paige overhears the old clerk and Sonoya chief, John Hawk, 
um, he's being questioned by the police sheriff and the sheriff is like accusing him. She's like, where were you last night? These two people had like hallucinations and stuff and skull heads and stuff. He's like, it wasn't me. I don't know who don't blame me. <laughs> I don't know where they got the shrooms. <laughs> right. Uh, Paige notices a cute guy come into the store just before she inadvertently orbs a bag of lollipops to her hand. <laughs> Mm-hmm. So we do know they mentioned lollipop, so that's that's uh consistent again. That's classic page. Yep. But uh apparently she outgrows that because that's only a big thing in season four. She outgrows that real quick. <laughs> yeah, somebody tells her you probably shouldn't do that. You're right. You're your right, your teeth. teeth. Or something. She's like, oh. And, and she like <laughs> looks at it and she like realizes, I think. Yep. <laughs> so funny. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but it's true. She's gonna rot her freaking teeth. <laughs> yeah, so she just getting out of that like uh early twenties mm-hmm. habit. <laughs> I think that was also like a, a device for them to make her seem younger. Right. And, joined. and it's something they she can matured do. pretty fast though. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, right. But it's also something for like you know, when they switch bodies, something to indicate that you know this is a page thing, but Phoebe's doing it. Oh, oh right. Yeah. So and yeah, that, that's the reason I remember her lollipop thing. Yeah, because of that episode. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> the police sheriff thinks the pranks were the work of the Sonoya because their tribal lands were stolen. They they think he thinks that they're bitter. So it's like you're gonna just play pranks on us and and because you're you're mad that we stole your land. <laughs> like, well, yeah, you guys are like mad at us for like doing something wrong. I'm like. That's- Get used like to it. not cool, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like you're definitely not cool. So why shouldn't I be mad? But <laughs> but John Hawk says it still wasn't him. So he laughs about it, but he's like, oh, it wasn't me. It sucks to be you. Uh, but he infers that maybe the disturbances at the Sierra Sojourn were the work of Gloose Cap and his brother Wolf. Mm-hmm. We don't know who they are yet, but this is this is something that Paige hears. That checks out. On the three-hour shuttle bus to Sojourn, Jeremy, the PR rep, sells Vista as innovative and environmentally friendly. The idea for Sojourn, uh, for Sierra Sojourn, is for the rich to pay to have the survivalist experience. Phoebe notices Paige's interest in Ben Waters, the bus driver, the same man from the store. Piper and Leo at the police station, filling out a report with Daryl, P3 was broken into, but nothing was stolen. Curious. Mm-hmm. Piper is annoyed that her couple weekend has been put on hold. Again, I say you probably shouldn't have put that alarm system because if you didn't know that someone mm-hmm. broke in, you wouldn't have had to go in there. Mm-hmm. They didn't take anything. Right. <laughs> They probably got scared by the alarm, but still. <laughs> it was probably Paige like coming back to pick up a drink or a bottle or something. Yep. Charge her phone or whatnot. <laughs> I don't think she knew how to do that at this point, though. Not that she wouldn't be able to orb that far, no. And she she can kind of just at this point she can only kind of like orb in place. <laughs> yeah. Get scared and pop out for a second. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Although I did think it was funny when she started orbing and uh when she was having orgasms. Oh, yeah. (laughs) That was pretty funny. (laughs) Uh, Let's see. Piper is annoyed that her couple weekend has been put on hold. And an officer with a tray of sandwiches and sodas bumped into the desk and they started to topple over. Piper Piper instinctively tries to freeze it, of course, because that's what she do. (laughs) But ends up blowing up the sandwiches and is covered in bits of mayo (laughs) and paper. Oh, that would suck, especially that everybody had to see it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing. That's the thing. Everybody sees the th- paper explode and nobody thinks it's weird. It's just like, like oh, things just do that. Uh, like, I don't know. They're trying to it's explain. part of the experience, people. <laughs> right. They think what the, maybe that the. The soda exploded and caused them. I'm like, no, I'm sorry. That's not. <laughs> That's one of the things I was bothered by this because the officer is just like somebody. <laughs> Somebody put some Mentos in the cola. <laughs> right. The offer's like, oh, my fault. And this doesn't even think anything of it. And Piper's just like, oops, I'm smiling. Ha ah, ha. Nobody knows that I did magic. <laughs> I'm covered in mayo. <laughs> Very unbelievable. And back on the bus, we learn Ben Waters has just graduated from law school. 
and took this summer job to get a break from the books. A storm is raging on as the bus trudges through. They drive onto a bridge. Lightning strikes a tree and causes it to fall behind them. Phoebe gets a vision of a flash flood ripping the bridge apart and causing the bus to be taken down the river. Oh, that would be a, a, a life uh, changer. <laughs> it got real intense. How long do I have? It got real. It's very fun. Final destination again. Like, this is like, oh, man, what's going to happen? All these people on this bus were on the bus. Oh, God, we have to stop this. She had seen something earlier that made her have to be there. And then to have this vision of getting in an accident and totally destruction all of the bus because that's just a little bit too much because her powers at the at that time weren't like precise enough to be like oh this is gonna happen tomorrow you know you don't girl right. i'm on a bus right now i'd be super freaked out i'm glad i don't have premonition powers so phoebe tells ben to step on the gas <laughs> she's like yeah you need to get faster. off this when you get off this bridge he's like it's too slippery i can't go that fast it's not gonna get work so phoebe is like everybody get into crash position <laughs> all the people are ducking they're like hiding in the stuff so one lady is taking pictures still because she's a weirdo <laughs> and all of a sudden the water comes rushing towards them Paige instinctively orbed out and back in unnoticed because people don't notice people's yeah. powers in this they're all like too preoccupied you don't you don't <laughs> notice when somebody's glowing and no. you're trying to die right <laughs> uh the wave comes thrashing smashing through the windows it causes the engine and the communications to die. So everything is just like flooded over and breaking down. It was scary. I would have been freaking out. Oh my God. I don't know what I would do in that situation. And Jeremy, the PR rep, he's like going, he's going on, he spouts like legal accountability jargon. And like, he's like, you know, we're not responsible for this. We'll pay for this. I'm like, all right. Yeah. You are so. <laughs> and they're probably all like, is this part of it? The other one on my side is the blood sucking lawyer. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so now everybody survived, but uh, the group is now forced to continue on foot, mm -hmm. uh, which is another three hours away from the Sierra Sojourn. But I was actually surprised they got hit. I thought when she got the permission that she would have stopped it and it would have been fine, but they, it, it happened. She didn't stop it. So that was an interesting twist. No, because she told him to step on the gas. Right. She should have said, stop, back up. <laughs> they couldn't back up because they were blocked by the tree on the other side. Oh. I know. It was, like, horrible. This is why I didn't want that power. Yeah. This is why, this is why Piper's my favorite, because I just, like, <laughs> freeze everything. Done. <laughs> but as they're walking up, they're walking down on foot, Phoebe thinks something is following them. She thought she, you know, felt the presence. Um, mm -hmm. Ben tells the story of Gloose Cap. And so now we know some context about who he is. He's like the shaman who uh, gets angry when the rules of the natural world aren't respected. And where's uh, he been for the last four seasons? Well, this is this is his land, so he's kind of guarding these these lands in particular. Right. Ben also says that he was ba he banished the mystical evil out of these lands, so that included all like the demons and witches. He said if any returned, they would be destroyed. <laughs> oh. So now they're freaking out, like. Does that count us? Does he think we're evil witches? Like, so now they're thinking that maybe that they're they're a danger from glue scap. Crazy. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, does it count if you don't know that's the rule? <laughs> right. I'm like, I'm not from these lands. I don't know. <laughs> what if, like, you're a, a witch from a line of witches that doesn't know they're witches anymore, but then you just accidentally go there and then you got to die? I know that would be horrible. <laughs> like, I'm innocent. I tell you, innocent. I knew. I need to know the rules. As they're walking along the path, a rock slide threatened the group. So now they're walking and there's like a mountain and rocks are falling. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. Great. Uh, so Paige orbs some rocks away from crushing Mitch and Angie. They're about to be crushed. She's like, ah, orb, rock, boulder. Rocks away. <laughs> um, and, Phoebe, and Phoebe's about to get crushed, but she levitated out of the way. But again, these powers, nobody noticed. How is this possible? How are people not noticing this magic? Phoebe's a really good jumper. <laughs> Paige is like, you better come down. Better come down. They're going to see you. Uh, but yeah, it seems like apparently when these disasters are happening, they're too focused on the actual disaster to notice that they're being saved by something. And that's... I think it's the same logic that doesn't uh, keep, that keeps Lois Lane from not knowing the Superman. Is. Exactly. Uh, Phoebe and Paige question the likelihood of all these light threatening disasters. Like, what are the chances that we have the buzz? And now this is Gloose Cap after us? Hmm. 
Piper is taking a shower, of course, <laughs> after watching one of their rental movies with Leo. Ooh. <laughs> mm, yeah. Did they get their Netflix uh, videos that day? No, this is, this is old school. This is like Blockbuster. <laughs> this is like taking take me back. Uh, she calls Leo and he orbs into the uh, from the video store. Leo figures out the water main broke uh, with, with a potential for gas leaks and they are evacuating the neighborhood. Piper you know, opts to get a hotel and Phoebe and Paige finally arrive at their cabin. Uh, a staff member tracked them and helped them uh, to help the group in before walking in. Phoebe thinks she sees an animal in her flashlight, but it disappears. One of the group members, Gloria, left her and her dad's cabin to go to the bathrooms in the main compound. She probably had to go poo. <laughs> right, because apparently, you know, there's no electricity in their cabins. And I think they said there's no like real bathrooms in there. So they, for anything that they want to do, like plumbing and stuff, they have to go to like the main entrance place. Yeah, she had to poo. <laughs> she got lost along the way and screamed when she saw the image of floating skeletons. What? <laughs> Howard and Tracy, a British couple, are swamped or swarmed by bats. Phoebe and Paige broke into Carlos's office for signs of bad behavior. Uh, all attacked parties talk about what they saw at the infirmary. The group at a campfire, Mitch seems intent on figuring out the true story behind Vista Recreation. Uh, Mitch tells Phoebe how the CEO cheated uh, cheated out the Seminole tribe in Florida. Is that a real one? That one is a real one. Okay. Seminole tribe in Florida because they had no legal claim on the land except living there forever. Huh? Piper finishing her shower in a cheap motel. Leo went to get tacos while Piper flicked through the channel and fell asleep. Back to this Native American thing, you know, they probably should have like given them a chance to buy some of it, maybe. <laughs> I mean, like they didn't even get a chance to have ownership. They were just like, yeah, you don't legally own it. Well, like, how do I legally own it? Where is the office to get a yeah. deed for this land? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, they probably would have charged them an exuberant amount they couldn't afford anyway. But at least we could have had a better role in history. Mm -hmm. See? Uh, so Phoebe dreamed of a Native American man with a spear and a wolf howling. When Phoebe awoke, she saw the wolf at the foot of her bed. It jumped towards the window and then disappeared. Oh, ghostly wolf. Spirit of the wolf. Maybe it was Prue. Maybe. Maybe yeah. She did have that connection to yeah, wolf-like dogs. <laughs> they, when they had like a flashback that they like included Prue. The only way was as a dog. But they, were all, they also showed the back of her head in that same episode. Oh, yeah, that one time. That yeah. one time. That's yep. true. Phoebe's like, she tells Paige, you always wanted to meet Prue, right? <laughs> yeah. Hey, Cujo, who you're growling at? Yeah. In the morning, Phoebe walked through the woods, pondering. In the distance, she sees both the man, the Native American man, and the wolf from her dream. Paige, she does come upon Phoebe, and Phoebe's like, Stop, because right in front of her is the wolf, and it's staring at her. They discuss whether Gloose Cup and the wolf are evil, and if they're supposed to help them. So now they're like, do we fight it? Do we ask it what it wants? Like, <laughs> what is happening? Like, uh, Then it cuts to Leo, and he brings donuts to Piper in the motel. They did never ate the tacos he brought, because Piper fell asleep before she could finish her tacos. So there's a, bunch of cold, oh. there's a bunch of cold tacos there as well, but he brings her donuts too. That's Leo's nickname for Piper when she's in a mood. Cold tacos. <laughs> I'm terrible. Oh, my Sorry. God. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> so then they eat their donuts and they watch cartoons. They just enjoy each other's company. All of this Piper Leo stuff is very mundane. <laughs> yeah. Like, whatever. Um, it's it's very the, the uh, soap opera like part. A device probably to contrast the... The or try to letting you realize the normal things they have to get through and deal with the stuff at the same time. True, I guess that it's is like nice. this. This is stuff that, that we would be going through, except right. they are trying to also fix something supernatural. <laughs> so Phoebe, uh, she is now with Angie, her journalist person. She's uh, Angie's directing her. 
Um, they're taking pictures of guests rock climbing. She's like, she's like, get these people. Did you get them? Did you get them? Get Mitch. He's really sexy over here. Uh, <laughs> You're giving me PTSD about one of my jobs. <laughs> oh, really? T- tell us about it. I used to work as a photographer. I was an event photographer. Oh. But not just any events. Events for um, Indian weddings. Wow. You know, okay. Hindu yeah. and uh, Punjabi. Shakti and, Shakti and Shiva. Yes, but then my used to my boss used to just give me orders like that. Just did you get that one? Did you get that one? Did you get oh, that one? Wow! And then like the people that were there, they would also like. Ha- it was the beginning of the digital camera age, so everybody had their digital camera, and everybody wanted to take their own pictures. And mm-hmm. just like, okay, I'll stand there and wait until you guys are done. Wow! <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I identify with her at this moment. <laughs> That's cool. See, this book was meant for you. Got Nikki nature hikes and pushy photographer people. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I love the show because it just it strikes chords everywhere. Yeah. Mitch appears to have interest in Phoebe and Phoebe feels a bit guilty for leading him on. <laughs> Paige has been trying to contact Leo unsuccessfully. They keep like, he's not answering. I, I was trying to tell him about all the crazy stuff that's going down, but he's not answering. Shouldn't he just like appear and give the Leo? Right. That's what they that's what they thought. Um there's a whole 10 minute YouTube video of everybody saying Leo <laughs> like, a bunch of times. Phoebe admits that she misses her boyfriend Cole. And so now she knows she's like, okay, I guess I should stop leading Mitch on and tell him what's what's up. She's like, yeah, I have a boyfriend, Cole. And Mitch is like, oh man. And and she's like, ooh, okay, we're friends now, Phoebe. <laughs> like, you know, you're no longer my competition. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Paige starts to strike up a conversation with Ben because she's really interested in Ben. He's who's also Native American, by the way. I forgot to mention that he's a Native American oh. as well. Um, oh. He's gonna need saving, isn't he? Uh, we'll see. Oh. We'll see when we get through You're this. Making predictions. Okay, making predictions. I like it. Okay. <laughs> and Ben is kind of aloof. He's just kind of distant to her. He doesn't seem like he wants to talk. And but then she sees Leo Orbin behind Ben. She's like, oh, okay, Leo's here. Uh <laughs> so she diverts Ben. She's like, oh, come over this way. And she she uh and she's really bummed because she she's like finally gets him to talk to her for a little bit and now she has to deal with this. And Phoebe and Paige uh meet Leo in their cabin now. So they go somewhere private where they can talk. And apparently ne- Leo never heard their calls. So was like, where were you? He was like, I don't know, I didn't hear you. Oh uh, I came because Piper was worried about you. <laughs> like Did so you that- turn off your fucking angel pad? I know. Yeah. Right. He's like, I turned this off because I'm with my wife. So <laughs> But yeah, He's slacking on the job a little. I mean, that was the a life saving part of it. <laughs> yeah. Phoebe and Paige ask Leo to see if they can find info on Glue's cap. She's like, we keep hearing this name. We know he's might be um, dangerous. So look him up. <laughs> can you Google this guy first, please? We don't have the internet. <laughs> right. We don't have the internet. We don't have the Book of Shadows. So to Jeremy, the PR guy's dismay, Angie does not plan on recommending the resort after a snake slithered out of her toilet. Ooh, <laughs> that's a fear. Paige wonders why Ben has been so aloof to her. Ben admits that he knew John Hawk his whole life. And he plans on being a lawyer for the Sinuet. He got a job on site to investigate. The Sinuet have a legal and uh, legal land treaty by the government. Yet all 30 pushed all, out. Because, all but 30. Oh, all but 30. Sorry. All were pushed out because there seems to be no government record of the document. Mm-hmm. Convenient. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ben says that the tribe should have ha- should have a copy of it on a wampum belt if they can find it. After returning their rental movies and researching Glue's Cap on the internet, Piper and Leo return to return to BOS? Book of Shadows, that's my abbreviation. Oh, of course. Uh, Piper thinks there should be a page on him somewhere in the Book of Shadows. Uh, Leo suggests that maybe someone put a magical veil over Glue's Cap's bio. Okay. <laughs> Piper finds a spell to remove a veil and his Book of Shadows pages emerge. Leo orbs Phoebe and Paige to the manor. Before Piper explains her findings, Cole shimmers in. He is still on the run from Call. Oh, Before that's how you say see... it. I like that. Oh, I was hoping that was right. I was saying oh. Q. I was saying Q Hall, but Call. <laughs> that sounds better. <laughs> I'll go with Call. Yeah, I like Q that Hall. According to the page in the Book of Shadows, Blue's Cap is the guardian of Native American mysteries and secrets. Though good in essence, he follows his own rules. 
His power exceeds the power of three. They want to go back and investigate, and they believe that if they use their powers on the wolf, Glooskap will kill them. And that's a that's a big chapter. Lots of crazy stuff happens in that one. That's an action. Yeah, just so convenient sometimes. Oh, this page we never saw in here has been hidden magically from us this whole time. Yes, yes. I'm going to read a little bit from this book because it talks about the logistics of the Book of Shadows, uh, which okay. I want to talk a little bit about because I am going to do a bonus episode on the Book of Shadows, but I want to know your thoughts on this, all right? <laughs> gotcha. It says, the content of the Book of Shadows was in constant flux. While some pages seemed to be permanent, the spells and information on others appeared and disappeared for reasons that the sisters didn't always understand. Okay. <laughs> but then later, don't we find out it was like grams the whole time? Well, that was about the, the flipping of the pages, but not where things like appear and disappear, you know? So it's so weird. Like, I don't even get like how the Book of Shadows has these abilities in the first place. So like, do you think that the Book of Shadows can like connect to some like magical database and then like learn new information <laughs> anything's possible especially since we didn't know about magic school at this point <laughs> right i know so i'm like would explain why things just get there or like the book power the book's power grows as they grow you know their powers grow so maybe the connection mm-hmm. to other places are stronger it's weird how things just appear i want to you know? i want to hope that there was like like the first witch or maybe like one of them and in, in the line of warren witches had to put a protection spell on it that like did all of those things that's what's just been protecting it the whole time or perhaps they even locked a a witch or warlock in the book do you think like when a member of the warren slash hallowell family dies that their their power is absorbed into the book that's a good one i didn't think about that that makes total sense too Okay, I dig that one. Yeah, lots of things to talk about. Lots of things to think about. So it's kind of like, it's almost alive. It's kind of organic. Right, right. Mm. Uh, Everyone but Cole starts to smell foul swamp before a call abruptly appears in the attic. Cole shoots lightning bolts. Cole hurls energy balls. Cole shimmers away. Call follows. Everybody else is just like ducking and hiding. Like, I don't want to be in this path of crazy powers. Call is trying to hit it with Cole. I think he's trying to make his move. Uh huh. You got to make a move. <laughs> Cole's pretty hot in his day. True. So, yeah, maybe you got some stinky demon interested in you. <laughs> so, Phoebe, Paige, Piper, and Leo return to the woods together, and the wolf is spotted. Carlos had seen the wolf too. And so like has all the group of them, the wolf in front of them. Carlos is like, oh, there's the wolf. I'm going to shoot it. He thinks, Mm -hmm. and he thinks the wolf is going to attack them. So he fires a rifle at the wolf. Bullet flies out. Piper freezes Carlos and the bullet that flies out. But the wolf runs away because of course, a spooked animal is going to run away. It makes sense. So now they're like, okay, so how are we going to explain this? (laughs) He's He's like, he didn't see, he didn't see Piper and Leo. So good thing, but. He's going to wonder what happens. So what happens is Piper and Leo hide. <laughs> uh, Paige orbs a branch under Carlos's feet. <laughs> and then he unfreezes. And so he unfreezes and he trips over the branch. <laughs> and Phoebe's like, oh, your gun went off when you fell. <laughs> he's like, oh, but he's like, but I saw a wolf. And they're like, what wolf? There's no wolf. There was never a wolf here. Are you okay? Did you bump your head? <laughs> Leo may be a white lighter, but it seems like Piper is a gas lighter. Mm. <laughs> But Carlos is still determined to end this wolf. He's like, I'm going to find that wolf and I'm going to get it. I'm going to kill that wolf. Uh, so they leave. And then a little bit later, the wolf appears again. Piper freezes all the non-magical people now. So mm-hmm. she's like, oh, the wolf is here. We need to we need to get contact with this wolf. Uh, yeah. So with all the people frozen, Phoebe kind of holds out her hand. And then the wolf places its head, head under its palm like a nice little pet, like a cute little wolf pet. I'm like, oh, I love it. <laughs> Uh, and when Phoebe touches the wolf, she has a vision of what the wampum belt with the treaty looks like. And then she sees like a cave and a waterfall. Like I was like, oh, is this the location of the wampum belt? Is this where it is going to be? Um, but she's like, she can't, she doesn't know where that is. So, and then she, after the, she comes out of the vision, she realizes like, we won't see the wolf again now until these lands are free. These lands are, you know, back to where they're supposed to be. Piper and Leo are about, she's like, well, you got what you needed. We're going back. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. um, that's very piper yeah and it's also the end of the weekend like it's sunday it's time to go back home so the guests are saying their goodbyes 
before they ride back to where they park their cars. Um, Ben has lunch with Phoebe and Paige, and he tells them that he has a job interview coming up with Mr. Delancey. And Mr. Delancey is the CEO of Vista Recreation, the evil company. Mm -hmm. So so he's going to go in, think Mr. Delancey is going to go in thinking he's going to get a job. But then Ben's going to be like, nope, I'm going to oppose you. I have plans to be lawyers of the Sonoya and we're going to sue you and we're going to take legal action. And so that's his plan (laughs) to take him off guard. (laughs) Cut to the general store. Um, It's nighttime. Uh, Ben takes Phoebe and Paige to see John Hawk, the chief and clerk that's there. And John tells them that the wampum is a map as well and implies that it too was stolen. Mm Mm-hmm. Of course. I have to, I, my husband makes reparations for your people all the time. He's a white guy. So I slap him upside the head. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And he takes it. Mm -hmm. Back at the manor on Monday night, Phoebe decides if she wants to try to develop the photos herself or pay someone to do it for her. (laughs) She's like, I don't know. I'm going to mess it up. (laughs) Girl, don't try to develop some pictures. You will burn yourself. Right. I used to work at a photo place too. Very <laughs> dangerous. Don't put bleach, real bleach, like Clorox into uh, photochemicals because you'll create sulfuric acid and die. Oh my God. <laughs> well, now I know. Scary. Yeah. Uh, Piper made some delicious spaghetti. With internet research, Phoebe discovered that a jerk uh, kernel confiscated the belt in 1887. And it was found in his storm cellar with other artifacts. Douche. Yeah. It was donated to a Kansas City museum, but one year ago, it was stolen from there. And after the Sinuet publicly challenged Vista, the girls deduced that it is impo- that it's possible Delancey stole the belt. Cole arrives, appearing exhausted, asking if they can figure a way to vanquish Paul. Cole is having a lot of trouble with him. Paul appeared and Piper throws garlic powder at him. <laughs> Don't stink up my kitchen. You're going to have to give me some context for that one. <laughs> yeah. Well, because, you know, he's a smelly demon. Every time he comes by, he stinks like rotting swamp and everything. Oh. And everyone can smell him except for Cole because, like, his smell is blocked. But she's like, ew. He's like, I just cooked spaghetti and you're going to mess up my beautiful smelling kitchen. And she's like, <laughs> and I just love it. She's like, she like opens up a bottle of garlic powder and just like tosses that. At him. <laughs> oh, it's great. I should definitely throw him off though. <laughs> right. Called choked on the garlic powder and retreated. <laughs> See, I told you. Yep. They totally threw him off. Yep. Uh, Piper gives Cole a jar of garlic powder also for defense. Leo orbs in and says that the elders have a theory that a low-level demon that Blue Cap exiled uh, is possessing Delancey. Ah, mm-hmm. that makes sense. If the demon can gain control of all of Blue Cap's lands, then they can complete an evolution uh, ritual and destroy him. Until then, they cannot step foot on the land. They realize that Ben is in danger because he could be considered a threat. And his meeting with Delancey is coming up. Ha ha. Aha. Knew it. Aha. <laughs> He's like a key or a pivotal person. I mean. Yes, yes. Yeah. So now we gotta protect Ben and we gotta figure out this evil demon, evil CEO wants revenge. We gotta figure out how to get the belt. It's all gonna go down here. <laughs> and then we also gotta figure out how to unpossess somebody. Cause yeah. we gotta do that now. Right. So what, what are your predictions before this last chapter? Oh, let's see. Um, they are going to have to uh, exercise the guy that has the demon in him. And then that's probably going to make Gloose Cap happy. And Ben is going to have to, like, seal the deal or something. All right. Let's see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> So the sisters arrive at Vista Recreations, Inc. office building. Uh, Phoebe focuses over a painting of William Delancey. She can feel that the belt is here and it's in a vault. <laughs> mm-hmm. So she's like, her, her psychic connection is, is happening. Her power <laughs> is just weird, you know, just 
do these right. weird things. <laughs> right. I feel like it's almost kind of like when she was with the succubus, like she's like, looks at his picture and she's like, oh, I can see what he sees. And, you know. Yeah, um, probably. Yeah. I guess it's all just like probably because, you know, what yeah. else is it going to be? <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> so. But she is an empath. Yeah, well, so, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. But. But it's but she does have that that connection kind Intuition. of in her. Yes, mm-hmm. yes, yes, very much so. Um, and the girls come in and they're all like in fancy dress, like in their you know, pencil skirts and really fancy like business. They were all wearing some of Prue's clothes. Right, they just raided her closet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which I always found those those professional attire very sexy. Oh, Phoebe, she has a recording device like in her bosom, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, I'm gonna turn this on. I'm gonna record his. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna record him talking to us. I'm gonna get the scoop. Uh, this is Ben, the day of Ben's um interview. So they're gonna kind of take along with Ben. They enter Delancey's office with Ben, and Ben's like, they're with me. Once in his office, Ben tells Delancey that he is representing the Sonoya and that they will be initiating legal proceedings. And Delancey just laughs. He's confident that <laughs> yeah, he's, he's like, I scoff at you. You are an idiot. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Imbecile. <laughs> uh, he's confident that if Ben continues on this path, that he will lose. Like, why don't you just come work for me and throw all this, this shenanigans out the window? Like, it's not going to amount to anything. You stupid. Uh, Typical but, toxic masculinity. Very much so. <laughs> yes. While Ben and Delancey are talking, Paige turns toward the vault in the room and she calls for the wampum belt, orbing it to her hands. Of course, Ben doesn't see this because she's behind Ben. He misses all the magic, like everybody in this mm-hmm. book. <laughs> I always wondered, did the orbing and like the magic visuals, did, was that like everybody could see that? Or was that just for our benefit as a viewer? Oh, no, those lights are there. Like they're there. It, it's physical. If people looked at her, they would see it. Okay. Yeah, I always wondered that because sometimes they make it seem like like the lights will like shine under a door or behind a couch or something. You can <laughs> see it, but I always wondered if if everybody could see it or just like magical people. I would think everybody can see because you know, like when they expose magic, she goes jacket. You know, like Kanisha and and forget me not yeah. and the lights mm-hmm. and everything. I I think it's people can see it, but they have to be looking at it or looking for it. You know, it's not it's, it could be easily unnoticed. Like if it's under a door or something, they're probably like oh. A car just drove by. Like, <laughs> like those 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 times that uh, like when spells get put on them and like a light comes and, and that stuff. Yeah, that stuff is more subjective. That stuff might be invisible. Yeah, I think that one depends on this particular spell because I feel like some might be seen, some won't be seen. So orbing for sure, I think, is something that would be seen if it's done in front of people. Yeah, I buy that. So she calls for the wampum belt. And Ben continues to say that he will keep him tied up in court for years. Uh, and then Delancey just is ignoring Ben at this point. He's, his eyes are zoomed to Paige. He's like, how did you get that? <laughs> like, what? Qua? And at this point, <laughs> Piper freezes Ben. She's like, okay, this is about to go down. She freezes Ben, and the sisters interrogate Delancey into confession. She's like, yeah, this is the wampum belt. You stole it. <laughs> She's like, He's like, yeah, I did, but you know, you know, you won't live long enough to tell anybody. I'm going to kill you right now. <laughs> Ooh, confession and attempted murder. Yeah. Wow. Threats of murder. Right. That's a crime. <laughs> like, we got you recorded. I got you recorded in my boobs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, this globular figure emerges from Delancey's body. So it's, it's like this big blob and they don't even give him a name. It's like this unnamed demon that comes out and he's like laughing and it's like oh i'm coming out i'm gonna get you piper freezes delancey because he doesn't want he doesn't want the mortal person to see what's going to go down mm-hmm. either uh, and uh, and also there's a receptionist coming through the door she's like mr delancey is like no freeze you too <laughs> like no <laughs> i was like okay we gotta don't worry leo's got this he yeah, can we... do his memory does we got stuff to do yeah so now phoebe goes and she turns off her recorder from her boobs <laughs> and she calls for cole and then Cole shimmers in, and he go, shimmers right between the ami- amoeba monster and and oh, there you go, it's an amoeba monster. Amoeba monster, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> and he sh- he's right between the amoeba monster and Ben, and the amoeba monster shrieks and tries to like engulf Cole. He's like trying to eat him. He's like, <laughs> um, but then because you know Cole is on the run from his lover, Cole, <laughs> <laughs> Cole comes and he appears and he fires lightning at Cole. And he's like, I'm going to get you. And then Cole ducks. 
He ducks out of the way, and then the lightning hits the amoeba monster, amoeba demon, and destroys the amoeba demon. Demon vanquish demon. Easy peasy. That's done. Is it though? <laughs> so now then the sisters recite a spell and a potion at call. They throw a potion at call. They say a spell, and that vanquishes him. So call's dead. Call killed amoeba demon. Sisters vanquish call. Paige orbs the belt back into the vault. Piper and freezes the room. Paige grabs Ben. She's like, well, we said what we needed to say. So see you in court. <laughs> <laughs> and Ben's like, no, I'm not done yet. I didn't even, I didn't even uh, give my case. You know, Phoebe assures Ben. She's like, oh, we got it. Don't worry. We got, we got enough for this case. He's like, okay, whatever. But I, I don't think I got anything. <laughs> <laughs> so now the girls go down in the building again they're downstairs and daryl appears and they urge daryl to go in with a search warrant and daryl is nervous because you know if if they're wrong and the belt isn't there in the vault it will hurt daryl's career and this is something that has come up in the show quite a bit like you better be mm-hmm. right about this this is i'm putting a lot on the line for you girls and you, you better not yeah. screw me over they assure him like yeah the wampum belt is in there we saw it we touched it we put it back <laughs> so like okay Mitch and Angie arrive now, the reporters, and Phoebe tells them that their inside scoop is about to be ready. We got some stuff to tell you. Paige goes to a Thai restaurant with Ben. They're going to have some sexy chat, I guess. Piper tells Phoebe that she wonders if there's a privacy spell because she's going to have sex with Leo tonight and you better wanna, you, might, you might want to be out of the house. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to ask Cole if he wants to see a movie tonight then. Uh, <laughs> she's like, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how the book ends. Really? That's how the book ends. Yeah. So, any thoughts? Any what about thoughts? the wolf? I guess that's something that will happen soon because they now have the confession and they have they're going to go arrest the land sea, so it's going to be all taken care of, and they won't be making a resort there anymore. So, uh, they they stopped it all without actually getting into the aftermath. We kind of just assumed that that's taken care of, and <laughs> it was so like anticlimactic. I was waiting for like some mystical end to where you know like ben had to be one with the wolf in order to appease the spirits and like became the the right. chief or something right <laughs> i know <laughs> i see why this wasn't an episode <laughs> <laughs> i mean there's some things we would have liked to see more um yeah but i, I liked it though i enter i was into the story that's why i'm so like uh Where's right. the rest of it? <laughs> right. Yeah. I thought the Piper and Leo B plot was boring, but I did appreciate the blockbuster movie rental talk because I'm like, that does take me back. Getting the upper hand on the corrupt business was incredibly satisfying. It's just like, oh. <laughs> yes, that was that was a good uh, um, a good little scheme they had working there because mm-hmm. I like it when, when they get the, the demons to kill each other. So I have some true stories for you, some actuality, real life stuff that this book used. I'm ready. (laughs) So um, Sierra Sojourn, that was supposed to be located at the Lone Pine River Creek, which is a real place. Mm -hmm. It's located between the Sequoia National Forest and Death Valley. If I ever make it out there, I'll uh, I'll remember that and go hike out there naked. (laughs) Yes. And see if you can find some wolf spirits. That would be great. Or not. Or not. <laughs> Silver Fox, maybe. Oh, 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 my God. <laughs> uh, and then I mentioned this, the Noyette was not real, but the Seminole tribe of Florida is real. Um, I only um, know Seminole fluids. Is that the same thing? <laughs> oh, all no? too familiar. Oh, my. No, not, not the same thing. Not the same thing. Seminole. Uh, tribe oh, I always get those two mixed up. English, right? <laughs> Uh, but they they have a pretty long history with the United States. There were several uh, Seminole Wars over land uh, where the U.S. would push them out of their native lands throughout the 1800s. And there was like treaties and all these different wars. And Glooskep is actually a real figure, um, has origins in the Wabanaki tribe. Oh. Something that's coming throughout all the legends is that he is always found as benevolent creator type. Mm-hmm. And that he has an evil twin brother that tries to twist nature to be cruel and unforgiving and it like, like will block paths and stuff so <laughs> you know what I've, i always uh hear about too is the wendigo the I mean, wendigo when, that's all over the place too and sometimes when people are talking about it, i'm like that's not how it goes right i mean <laughs> that's not what the wendigo does <laughs> the wendigo in charmed was very loosely based off of a bunch of other things more more werewolf than anything but but the the actual lore of wendigos which is um 
I forget where the, where it comes from. I think there's a lot of Native Americans when to go stuff too, but um, yeah, it's a Native American one, I think. Yeah, I think uh, Buffy did something with that too, and so did uh, Supernatural. Oh yeah, uh, but they're mostly usually like these white, like really skinny creature type things for the most part. So they kind of um, went in a whole different direction on Charmed. No, Wendigos are Bigfoot like creatures. The next thing we're doing is put that in my canonical hat. Canonical. Uh, I think we talked about the lollipops. That was a very canonical. Seeing as how Paige has that thing in one of her little ticks that was used to identify her. We have seen Native American representation in the show before. It was in season three, episode 14, The Good, the Bad, and the Curse. Remember that episode? That's the one where... uh, Oh, Maybe. with the cowboys, right? Cow- the western, cowboys. And, yeah, and, yeah, and yeah, and there's the that figures. Bo, Bo Lightfeather and his sister Isabel, and yeah, and yeah, this book definitely, definitely had its flaws, but I do think that it could have been a very action-packed and poignant episode um, because it had lots of um, horror elements and disaster movie elements and uh, social elements, very, very political elements. So it was, it could I have feel been like really. If they- if they would have made it into like an episode that it probably would have been like a, like kind of like a silly kind of like the Piper and Leo stuff being like this silly, like, do, 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 very, do, do, like very trying free, to get around. Everything. Yeah. Slapstick. Yeah. And then in juxtaposition to this very dark Buffy like feel from the cabin, you know, area. Yeah. I think it would have been a lot of fun. They could have put yeah more humor uh, in the Piper and Leo stuff. And uh yeah, that would have been a really, I think it would have been fun. There are events in this book, particularly with Phoebe and the Wolf, that tie into actual canon events. Mm-hmm. You know, because Phoebe has these dreams of the wolf. She has a like, vision of the wolf. She has this very psychic connection to the wolf. So it really makes sense why when they go to magic school she and she goes on this vision quest, she sees the image of this wolf. Oh. It, it, it kind of ties, it gives a reason why she would see this wolf specifically and why it would call to her because she already had this kind of connection. And why she'd be like, oh, yeah, I can totally trust this thing. Right. It's like, hi, Wolfie, Wolfie, Wolfie. Uh, <laughs> that also could have been the, the time where they throw back to the wolf guy. Yeah. So episode. If, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so if this happened canonically, if that, this happened in season four, I think it would make that that moment in season six so much more powerful. It even, has, it even appears like, kind of like in a ghostly way, in a mysterious way. And the vision mm-hmm. quest is a very Native American thing to begin with. So it does have those mm-hmm. connections. So I think that would be- I cool. wonder, do you know what, I mean, because if I remember correctly, they were at magic school and I forget the reason that Phoebe was talking to this shaman in the first place. I feel like he was like one of the teachers at school. Or? Uh, she really just followed the wolf and then the wolf turned into the shaman lady. Oh, okay. That's what it was. Yeah. So it was like the, it was a student that was like trying to help Phoebe kind of like get past her block because, you know, she's been, her powers have been a little off and she, you know, that's when she gets the vision of the future and she sees young Chris for the first time and she discovers like Chris's wide's brother and stuff. So mm-hmm. yeah. Oh. <laughs> There's one thing when when Daryl calls, Leo greets Daryl as Inspector Morris. I'm like, ew! You would never say, you would never call him Inspector Morris. Like, Daryl, not at that point anyway. No, I'm like, say Daryl. And then uh, there's a funny thing that happens in chapter one. Uh, Paige teases Phoebe over the potential of being a dog walker. When mm-hmm. she, when when Phoebe when Paige ends up being a dog very, walker, very very foreshadowing all yeah. those jobs that Paige gets. I remember yeah. that she's all like, "Oh, you're really gonna take a dog walker? Are you serious? Like that's a crappy job." And then she's doing it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that was pretty funny to me too. I laughed when I read that part too. So now we're gonna do rhyme time. Should we try a spell? Why not? Let's try a spell. In the wind, I send this rhyme. Bring death before me, before my time. You've really got to lay off the rhyming through. Wonderful. Witty, but wordy. I did the rhyme. I will do the time. Good night. It's the unveiling spell. Pages buried neath the veil, imposed by unknown foes to seal. The ancient text I wish to see, be gone the veil's obscurity. I don't like it. <laughs> it, it loses a little bit on veil and seal. Yeah, mm, I don't like to say this. This isn't fun. This doesn't empower me. <laughs> no. The last two yeah, lines it, are last two lines are good, but yeah, I like it because I like the way they try to rhyme that too. Mm-hmm. My favorite one is there's five two favorite ones. First one is the 
the spell when they're in the, um, when they're tricking the the I forgot who was attacking the elders, but one of them comes over and tries to do something, and they have to vanquish him. And one of the voices in his feet is like, "I'm rejection, you're a deflection." <laughs> that was Ames. That was Ames, the Dark Letter, and blinded by the uh, light. And then my other favorite one is the uh, the Truth spell. From now until it's now again. After which the memory ends. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. And the other one was like like time for amends and victims' revenge. Cloning power turns sour. Power to change turned to strange. I'm rejecting your deflection. Yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's a good one. So that unveiling spell was okay. If they cut if they cut out the first two lines, I think it would be better. Just say the ancient text I wish to see, be gone the veil's obscurity. Keep it simple, keep it clean, keep it easy. That would have been fine. But um the second spell. To vanquish call, it's a, it's a power of three spell that requires a potion after chanting. Demon hunter on the prowl, concealed with no restraints, condemned the scourge of death so foul, erased its putrid faint. I wanted to say taint there, but... <laughs> <laughs> I think it works. Yeah. I think it still works. <laughs> putrid taint, yes. <laughs> I mean, that's... I wouldn't want that. You know? Uh, I like I like some of the words, the language they have is very powerful language, scourge and condemned and yeah. I was just about to like if they wrote that. No, that came out of the book though, right? Yeah, these are these are ones by the author. Yeah, brand oh, new. No, spells. I mean I mean the, the the those spells came out of the Book of Shadows. They weren't oh. like spells they wrote to right deal right, right. with this issue. Right. Yeah, that makes more sense because I was like, if they wrote this, I'm like, wow, that's like some. Some tough rhyming for a spell from these chicks. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, that one I kind of like more. The rhyming is a little off, but I, I'm not as offended by it. Uh, I can get by it if she em- emphasizes the right words. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm okay with that one. And the words had... are very much stronger, too. So. Yes, yeah, very strong words, very visual, very yeah, powerful stuff. So cool. Next, we have Best Baddie Rankings. Uh, we have quite a few now because uh, the first book in this section had Shax and the Source from Charmed Again. Mm-hmm. And this one has Call, and I guess you could count the Delancey Amoeba Demon. Amoeba Demon. He had no name, so I'm calling Delancey Amoeba. <laughs> Globule, globule, is that word yeah. you use? Globular, globular, <laughs> yeah. Globular. <laughs> Um, and then we have the people that won our last Best Baddies, the carryover. So we have Gabriel and Jeremy, not the PR guy, but Jeremy, the first warlock, and Athelak. So we have like six demons, seven demons, one, two, three, four, seven, already on the list. And it's only like the second book in this, this set. So uh, I guess I'm going to rank the source first, since he's the source. Then I'm going to put Shax. Then I'm going to put Athelak. Then Gabriel. Then I guess see this is Delancey and Call are at my bottom, but I don't know who's gonna be first. And I guess Delancey and me because he's the one that was making the craziness happen, even though he was less active in it. Um Yeah, he's definitely a bottom. Yeah, yeah. See he's definitely definitely <laughs> a bottom. Um uh, and calls the top. So there you go. <laughs> so that's what I'm gonna do. I'll figure it out more when we get more, but right now that's my, the gist. Okay. And now I have a game for you. What is this? Some kind of game? Grimoire Games. Some people think this is entertainment. <laughs> it's going to, it's actually a quiz. Okay. I think uh, I can handle that. Yes. Yeah, so this will be easier. We're going to find out what your spirit animal is. So first question, where do you feel most at home? Your bedroom the middle of a jungle I'm exploring, surrounded by friends, on a running path, on a farm, at the beach. I have to say my bedroom, although the nude beach is a close second. <laughs> that's, oh, that's true. I've I never been to one, so I need to get to one. Ugh. Oh, you need to come to California. What do you do if you see someone being bullied? Speak up, usually by mocking the bully. <laughs> Make a loud and distractive noise. Wade in and break it up. Protect the person being bullied. Slip away. Check on the person after the bully goes away. Mm, so many like factors to like put into that. I is know. It a child is it, thing. Is it an older kid? Is it someone who looks like they have a gun? Like all these things affect what I would do. It's, it's, a, it's a hard one. Right. 
I'd probably have to go with the uh, most realistic is uh, check on a man when it's done. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you okay, little boy? Little I'm child? a good Samaritan, but uh, uh, I'm not gonna put myself in danger. Yeah. <laughs> not all, no. All right. Not like that. Yeah. <laughs> What's your favorite color? Midnight red. blue. Oh, red. Is that on here? It's not on here. <gasps> Rude. How can they not have red on here? Okay, here are the options. Midnight blue, orange, green, purple, yellow, sky blue. They have two blues and no red. <laughs> oh, that's not fair. That's not fair. Uh, I'd have to go with orange then. That's the closest, closest. thing. Yeah. I what do would like the orange orange sunset. In the sky. Orange sunset. That's, orange is actually my second favorite color. My first is turquoise. Oh. So, yeah. <laughs> Uh, what's the first thing you buy when you win the lottery? A nature reserve, gifts for my family and friends, I plan to invest, a fast car, a boat, a new house. I guess a new house. Probably one on wheels. What is your dream job? Inventor, cook, CEO, environmental scientist, political activist, astronaut. Yeah, these are hard. I don't know Astronaut. <laughs> That's a dream job. <laughs> is it because it has ass in the name? <laughs> yes. How did you know? <laughs> I know you very well these days. It's great. <laughs> oh, this is a fun one. What superpower do you want? Telepathy, ability to fly, shape shifting, super strength, invisibility, the ability to heal others. The healing one is very tempting. It's shape-shifting, definitely. All right. Which book would you choose from the shelf? A fantasy novel, a self-help book, a business or productivity book, the novel everyone is talking about, a book about your favorite animal, a comedian's memoir. I guess maybe a book everybody's talking about. I would have to say Charm, Spirit of the Wolf on Amazon. (laughs) And in paperback, if you have the paperback. (laughs) You know what? Honestly, you know what you need to do? What? For people like me, none of these books are on audiobooks. I know. They're do old. It. Read it. <laughs> Make it. Have it. They should get like the charmed actors to read them. <laughs> oh. Wouldn't that be cool? Only. Yeah. If only. You know, you get on the phone with Holly and Brian and ask them if they're down. In an ideal world, what pet would you have? A rescue dog, a pig, chickens, a chia pet, a cat, a parrot. Well, this must be an ideal world because I have my rescue dog. Aww. <laughs> I think yeah. he rescued me, though. <laughs> my heart. No, he's a big red wiener. <laughs> dog, I- wiener dog. Sorry. <laughs> big red wiener dog. You know, I used, I had a dog growing up that was half pug. And half dachshund. Oh wow, that must yeah. have been an interesting combo. What it did his face look like? Uh, it had like little teeny like pug ears. It breathed. It could breathe better than a pug because its nose was like more elongated, so it breathed a lot that better. Was helpful. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, it did have a curly tail, like a little curled tail, <laughs> and a little bit longer body. So it was a really cool hybrid. What is your preferred method of transport? By water, by air electric car something interesting like a jet ski or parkour parkour um <laughs> parkour parkour right i travel to different realms in my mind <laughs> or with my own two feet i'm gonna go with parkour parkour that'd be what is your hogwarts house oh honestly i'm slytherin but i feel like i am more of a of a uh, what's harry potter gryffindor gryffindor I feel like a Gryffindor, but my attitude says I'm a Slytherin. Okay. I took so, the quiz. That's what it said. So Slytherin so then? I guess so. Okay. <laughs> Your trouser Slytherin. My anaconda. That's why, because I'm really good with the trouser snakes. Gotcha. Mm, okay. Mm. It's all making sense now. <laughs> it's all making sense now. All right. Okay. I got your results. All right. <laughs> Are you ready? It's a raccoon. Oh, let's see what it says about okay. raccoon. I it guess. Says. Despite their reputation, raccoons have many positive traits. 
These cunning mischief makers are confident, curious, and assertive. But most of all, they're adaptable survivors that must learn, must have learned to use humans to help them thrive. If you have a raccoon guiding your life, you likely use your skills to help others. Raccoons put their family and tribe before everything else. With your ability to think outside the box, you can create opportunities to transform your life and the lives of all around you. Okay, I'll take that. All right. That's good. That's actually pretty accurate. What'd you get? I got Panda. Panda? (laughs) What's Panda? We do Panda. Panda says, if you have the panda as your spirit animal, you're likely a calm and gentle soul. But that doesn't mean you're a pushover. Pandas are also strong and determined. You know how to set healthy personal boundaries and take steps to feel safe in the world. It's likely that you're fond of creature comforts and need your own space to recharge your batteries. Call on the spirit of the panda to help you find your calm center and learn to love. Yeah, I can see it. I because I'm, I'm I'm a rabbit in Chinese zodiac, so I have that. That's that calm kind of like I am an introvert, but I'm a very like energetic introvert. So like. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I've got fire, I've got passion, and I can talk to people. I'm not socially awkward, but I do like my my inner my inner space. System. Yeah. Pandas are super cute too. <laughs> so are raccoons. <laughs> so now the very last thing is tips for future white lighters. I was out being a force of good in the universe. This is the section where you give us the moral or lesson that we learned from the book. Um, I think the lesson is don't infringe on native american lands or they will put a curse on you (laughs) yeah uh, that's kind of similar to what mine was i said when faced with the choice of siding with an evil corporation or a native community go with native americans (laughs) Mm because you know they are reverent of nature they're full of tradition and warmth they're spiritual and profound a symbol of culture and wisdom you know they're generally incredibly nice people and they deserve the utmost respect (laughs) <laughs> I just realized wow. I actually ran into um, a Native American fellow on one of my hikes <gasps> not too long ago. And he's, he, he really like came through and saved our butts because we got, um, there's this hike out here in California. It's called the Bridge to Nowhere. And it's like a five mile hike in. And then, of course, a five-mile hike out. Mm. And so we had gotten to, like, the base of almost where it was. And we found out that we were on the wrong trail. We were supposed to be on the mountain that was right above us. Oh. And this guy came out of nowhere, really. He was just, like, sitting there having his, his snack or whatever. And his name was Victor Wolf. <gasps> yeah. Whoa! And he, and he was a Native American. And, and he... Gave us his water pump and let us get uh, fresh water. Well, what was fresh water after we used the filter um, out of the creek that we were walking through so that we could have water on the way back because we totally ran out of water. We were out. like We were sucking on the last bit of it. And without that water, it would have been an excruciating walk back because it was not very hot on the way back, but we didn't have any water. You know, that would have been wow. terrible. <gasps> and five miles. <laughs> man see this was meant this was meant to be your book see yeah oh nice, all the insights nice. the spirit of the wolf came the spirit of the me. wolf oh my gosh this is beautiful and yeah i i find that um native americans are just generally really helpful friendly people and they will you know you respect them they respect you and that's it's beautiful so oh love that way to tie it all together mm-hmm. full circle <laughs> A beautiful closing moment. Uh, so yeah, that's <laughs> that's the end. Where can the people find you? Oh, if anybody's interested, you can find me on the Instagram um, at Mr. M-R underscore Robear, R-O-B-E-A-R, like bear. Grr. <laughs> but it's also Robert in French, so. Yeah. It works yeah. both ways. Oh, and I forgot to mention that you made our beautiful other introduction. For words of the witches oh yes that was an interesting um thing that i i was totally into making that <laughs> yes i'm going to be using that for the bonus episode so every time i have a nice bonus episode that will be the introduction for that episode so i'm so excited i feel like i need to fix it up for you though the weird quality of my voice i like it because it shows you that it's like this is something's a little bit different you know so i don't mind okay. it at all i like it that way if you love it i love it yes Perfect. i do <laughs> 
So that's the end. You can find me on this podcast, Words of the Witches, at Instagram and Facebook and YouTube. All one word. And then you can find me on the other podcast with Sean, uh, Hanging with the Hallowells. Very cool. And then you can email us at wordsofwitchespod at gmail.com. Nobody emails, but it's there if you feel like it. And um, yeah. Your destiny still awaits. Bye.